So legislation, as uh, we were saying, um, we're going to start with the TCPA, as those of us in the know say. Okay, but is it enough, all this legislation? I think what you'll, what you'll take away is it isn't really enough yet, but anyway. Okay, so here are some of the points. 1991, it passed the first version of it's been updated a couple of times. Automatic dialing systems, artificial pre-recorded voice messages are supposed to be restricted. Uh, as we saw before, um, that can be used for research and polling. In 1992, um, it was implemented, and there were also do not call lists, which is a big part of it. It was revised by the Federal Communications Commission in 2012 to obtain prior express written consent from consumers before robocalling them. Ha, ha, ha. Um, they couldn't claim they had an established business relationship to avoid getting consent when using their home phones. And it's also supposed, they're supposed to have an opt-out mechanism during each robocall so they can tell the telemarketer to stop calling. Uh, I don't think we see too much of that, but you can see here the similarities between the CAN SPAM Act and the TCPA, I'm sure. And then in 2003, um, this was the Do Not Call Registry. Um, covers all telemarketers, with the exception of certain nonprofits. It applies to interstate and intrastate calls. And um, to reduce the number of hang up and dead air calls consumers experience, restrictions on the use of auto dialers and requirements for transmitting caller ID information, supposedly. Um, now, this is the new one that's been passed during the Trump administration. It'll take effect, it's supposed to take effect this year. It's supposed to start to deal with the robocall problem. Um, there's a special authentication system that's been developed called Stir Shaken, based on the acronyms. I'll show you that a little bit in a minute. And this is supposed to combat the spoofed numbers to help determine whether the number is really the same as the number that shows up on the caller ID. This is all supposed to happen technologically. And uh, you can see that uh, a lot of these mobile carriers, some of the big ones, AT&T and Verizon, have begun rolling it out. And what you'll see is that you will see from time to time um, scam likely or spam likely warnings on calls. And I think you'll notice that this has started to happen somewhat. And supposedly this will improve in the coming months. So you're going to get a warning based on this stir shake and authentication system. Well, I don't think we're going to get into this because I don't think I really understand it. But um, shaken signature based handling of asserted information using tokens. STIR, short for Secure Telephony Identity Revisited. The reason it's named that way is at the bottom, which is um, the James Bond original character in Ian Fleming is the early James Bond. The best ones, especially, always ordered his martinis shaken, not stirred. And these poor guys, as it said, uh, tortured the English language until they came up with an acronym that matched shaken. There's the original James Bond. The only good one. Okay, Daniel Craig is pretty good. Yeah, the fight scenes are pretty good. Okay, but come on, Sean Connery, you can't touch him. Shaken, not stirred. Um, so just be sure, folks, that it, it won't hurt to get on the do not call list. If you haven't bothered to do that, um, go ahead and do it. Um, You'll still get these other kind of calls and probably still get robocalls, but you're not supposed to. Um, okay. Laws do get broken. Yes, they do. What else can we do? Um, I'm going to just, we're going to go to this website. I'm going to show you a couple of the... <laughs>
Oh, it's an irritating phone call. However, this one is from my daughter, Sean. So let me stop. Thanks. Let me pick up uh, when I get up the phone with my daughter. Okay. This is new. These are some of the COVID-19 robocall scams. If we can just get this site open here. Let's see if we can get her. Okay. From the FTC. Consumer information. March 27, 2020. Assistant Director. Scammers and scammy companies are doing... Oh, come on. Just I'm not stopping this. Hang on, hang on. What are we doing? I'm not... Why is my daughter calling me? I'm recording. Okay. Um, they want you to hang up if you get the call. Why do scammers use them? Because they need only a few people to take the bait for them to make money, right? Could be thousands of dollars that they get. They could get your bank account or your PIN codes or your Social Security number, right? Brings up the bad times, bring out the worst in scammers. Okay, so here are some of the recordings that are that they're picking up at the FTC. I'm just going to play this. You probably don't get this. Okay, what I'm going to ask you guys to do on that site is just play the recordings yourselves or just 30 seconds each. I know that if I play them on my computer, you won't be able to hear them from the painful experience. So I'm just going to ask you to do that, please. And have a, just three of them. It'll just take you a minute. And you should be aware of these scams and maybe warn your parents. Um, so we've, uh, we've talked about um, the Pennywise of, uh, of marketing outbound B2C. Uh, calls and we looked at some of the sins and some of the bad things the robo calls the spoofing the neighbor spoofing when the number looks like it's from your area code etc and I've talked to you about some of the legislation that has been passed this new one um, is supposed to the traced act is supposed to especially help it's already kicking in a little bit but um, Obviously, we know the bad people always find new ways. It's always a game. They up the ante one, and then we match it, etc. You know, it's the way it works. Now we're talking a bit about the industry and some of the players as we kind of wrap things up. These are some of the um, companies that do outbound telemarketing. Um, and here are their websites that you can click to if you want to. I mean, I'm just going to pick one. One, I'll just pick this one. Maybe I can click to their site. Let's. See. Oh no, that's just taking me to the next page. Sorry, guys. So here are some of the. Here's some other companies. Hello Cells. You know, wow, 24/7. You know, so, um, so, you know, this is what I mean by the dark horse. Particularly, you know, a lot of pe companies if they're Anybody's going to get into outbound telemarketing, um, they hire companies to do it. And oftentimes it is maybe just going to be research um, and something benevolent or polling. Um, but, um, you know, for the malevolent stuff and the bad stuff, you know, we're not really sure who those people are many times. A lot of it goes through international exchanges and it's very hard to track here to the u.s and as we saw a minute ago they don't need very many people to uh, fall for the scam they can make a lot of money so not very well-known players even though it's what 80 billion plus industry um, here is the um, the trade association it's called pace professional association for customer engagement talk about a harmless sounding name, right, everybody? You wouldn't even know what they do from this. Call centers care. There we get a little hint <laughs> um, about membership, FAQs. Do we have FAQs? Yeah, we have it right here. We don't want to charge you too much. 
<laughs> there are the levels of membership. You know, so that, these are the only questions, I guess, right? Regulatory, of course, they're doing a lot of that. Uh, Pace pack is money they're giving to politicians. Um, so, right, FCC seeks comments. Let's see what this one is. Probably on the reassigned numbers database. Technical requirements for the reassigned number database. North American Numbering Council. Okay, all kinds of interesting things. So, um, resources. Well, they don't tell us too much about that. Whoop, maybe they do. Supplier directories. Anyway, that's the trade association. It's another kind of quiet seeming outfit, I would say. So not, not too much about the players in this marketplace. And as I said before, for most of the applications for telemarketing, companies do it in-house, right? A few positives about the industry. This, again, is from the book. Uh, hey, it provides flexible employment to more than 6 million people. It's probably a lot more than that. This is a few years old. I bet it's 10, 11, 12 million by now. People all over South Dakota and different parts of the country are glad to have these jobs. And India uh, and other countries also. Look at this. A median population of a town with a call center, 23,000. Nonprofit organizations, single most successful tool for them for getting the donations. And once again, on the jobs, these are the kinds of people who get the jobs. Again, the jobs, $12 an hour. <laughs> okay, so a lot of it's about the call centers and the jobs. And those are, you know what, those are valid, those are valid points. And not all these people are making, they're not making robocalls, these people, for the most part. They are, you know, they're being uh, outsourcing, companies outsourcing different parts of their um, telemarketing. They could be outsourcing their customer service, too. Now we're kind of moving towards the wrap up here, and I want to talk about CPM and the quality of the impression. And we looked at these numbers before, and again, they're a few years old. And it's based on your personnel cost, how senior the people are. It's based on what you're asking them to do. Now, these costs for the outbound consumer of $1.15 to $4 um, per call includes the 4% of calls that actually have a dialogue, right? Otherwise, it's a, it's a busy number. It's not a, it's not a call. So the CPM is, so if it costs $4 per call, I guess for 1,000 calls, it would be $4,000, right? <laughs> That's a $4,000 CPM. So there's a range here. So I'm saying it's $2,000 plus CPM. Now, you may recall that CPMs for out-of-home out advertiser are like 5 or $6. Radio is about the same. Primetime TV is maybe $20, $30 to cost per thousand. So you see what you're paying here uh, for a conversation between two live people where it goes back and forth and, and, and objections are overcome. Um, hard to overcome objections uh, with an out-of-home ad, uh, right? <laughs> or with a TV commercial. Um, but that back and forth, that real communication between people is incredibly effective at sales. And uh, it's expensive because uh, that's just the way it is. What about the quality of the impression? Well, people like talking on the phone. They pantomime and act out things. Phone conversations last in your memory. They have weight and confidence. Um, online exchanges fade, this person says. So as we evaluate different, different media types and different ways of communicating, a live human voice and talking to a person is special. And isn't that why calls are up so much now in this bad time with COVID-19? Because we like the live communication with people more than Internet stuff. Right? We like to hear their voice. Quality of the impression. An impression is one person seeing one ad one time. So this just shows how people lounge around when they talk. We've got a video that shows some of that really at the end of this. In just a minute, you'll see some people lounging and talking. So let's get down to the quality of the impression here. Remember, unlike other media, it goes both ways. 
right? 